presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Homosassa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good game there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. You have the power to create. Your power is so strong that whatever you believe comes true. You are that way because that is what you believe about yourself. Your whole reality, everything you believe is your creation. I like that one. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 134, NASDAQ up 33, S&P's up 850. Gold, gold contract trading down $3.30 at 1947 an ounce. We have silver up 7 cents, $22.80 an ounce. Light sweet crew down a buck 37. $83.04 a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10-year note, down 17 ticks, trading out at 110.27. The 30-year down a full point, plus four ticks at 121.20 and King Dollar. King Dollar's the mover out here, folks. That's the bottom line. King Dollar right now, rejected lower price. King Dollar is trading at a price point up 35 ticks at 102.526. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, you talk about some price spread out here today, man. It was pretty intense. You know, the SPY, we got up to 451. And 451, the last, that high volume when we came down was 452.89. And it couldn't even make it, which is pretty weird. Uh, bottom line is that you still got a small ABC structure on the way down. That's how this is set up. You know, bottom line, it gave it up. It gave it up in spades. We'll see how this shakes out coming into the close. But as I said in the update, I suspect coming into the close, we're going to go right after this low. It's, it's dicey. It's a dicey one. It's not, we don't have a real high volume low here. Let me show you this. You know, normally, if he, um, that, that's, uh, it's not a real conviction play here, but you still do that the volume is still there, you know? Nothing big, but the bottom line is that, you know, we, we stair-stepped all the way down, all day long. We go into the end, end queues. Well, first we go to the queues. We take a look at the queues, what you have with the queues. The queues got to a price point out here of uh, 370, no, 374, 374.36. You're at 369. Now, what, what's, what is intriguing here, there's no doubt. Now, you're going into the volume of 61 million. Well, we've already done 61 million. So that was actually pushing up with volume, and it gave it up on price. So that's kind of dicey, because when you do that, you can go right back up, you know, right to that level. That's how this shakes out. And what has happened with the queues, the queues are coming into that $100 million, I mean, 100 million share price, but that is at 372. So now what you can see is that you're not holding price inside the NDX 100, which is a problem. We go to the NQs, we take a look at the NQs out here. We have with the NQs right now, there we go. So we take a look at the NQs, put these, pull these back. You talk about a price spread in the NQs. We went from 15,442 to 15,136. And yeah, the same setup, man. You're coming into volume here. Your probability is they're gonna, they'll run it down. Because you can see what's happening now. The last two bars, we had 10,000 contracts and 8,000. 
and that's going into 15,000 and 20,000. Yeah, check this out. I'm gonna go back to the S&Ps for a second. Yeah, I see what's happening here. Let me go back. See these two bars, that's what you're going into. And yeah, you got price going, you know, the last 30 minutes. But those two 10 minute bars, that's uh, 10,000 and eight. Eight's the second one, so you got a contraction there. And you're going into 15 and 20. That's saying we're going down. Go to the ES, let me do this. It's gonna be the same setup, but I just wanna see specifically this number. Okay, so pull this out. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, so let's put this right here. That's what you're going into. Okay, so we did, last bar was 26,000. Bar before that was 34. That's going into 43 and 53, yeah. This thing, this thing doesn't have it. Doesn't it? Doesn't have well. It doesn't have it to make it through it. That's what's going on. So, can't bust them up. Guess what? You'll bust them down coming into the close. We go over to take a look. Let's go take a look at the note and bond market because the ten year. This is what's going to be interesting about the ten year right now is that we had a couple days up. I want to see how this is uh, backing down. Whoa, we backed down all right. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> it backed down all right. Look at this thing. Okay, so the 10 year gave it up in spades. You get 1.6 million contracts. Yeah, that's saying that we're gonna go back and test the lows again. And that lows we're talking about is 109.24. And then if we go to the gold contract, we take a look at gold. What we have out here with the gold contract, that got down to 1945. You swing is 1939. This is getting dicey, man, particularly going into a Friday. This is dangerous, man. We're going to have our man Tim Ward on today, too, but this is dicey because that's telling me that this actually wants to go down probably to this, could even be 1904. See, if you break, if you break that uh, 54, no, not 54, 39. And on a Friday, we can do that in a second, and particularly how the dollar set up, the dollar set up that it wants to go higher. So this goes down here on a Friday, you're gonna go against the strength of how we came off the bottom in February. That's how that baby's set up right now. So there is certainly a huge amount of action. If we go over to the VIX, I'm sure that we get an elevated VIX now. There's no two ways about that. Oh, look, at it's even down, that's even crazier. <laughs> That's, that's even, you know what, that's even more bizarre. The reason being, folks, is that that's saying there's no fear. And if there's no fear when the market has just gone down, you know, 55 points, 55 S&P points, that is saying quite a bit, meaning that's when markets can go south. Dow, Dow Industrials right now down 142. We get the NASDAQ uh, 44, S&P's off 11 and a half. Stay right there, folks. Come right back with our man, Mr. Tim Wood. Candlestick Pattern Analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick Patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 145. We get the NASDAQ up 53. S&Ps are up 12. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And remember, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord dash oracle.com that's odd dash oracle.com tim odd what's going on well i sent you over uh, actually four charts and uh let's take a look at chart one okay i have um, it all right uh, which is basically the spys and um i have uh, two shaded areas there um yes that are uh pink Anyhow, the first one I have open gap. That day was uh, September or no, September, so July 12th, and that day had 91 million shares. Uh, so, and that was a gap up. So, uh, when I sent you over this chart, we didn't touch that gap yet. Well, at inner day today, we did touch that gap. So, the day is not over yet. We got oh, about 70 million traded right now, but if we hit less than well, 10 percent less than 91 million shares, which is what 80, yeah. 81 or 82 somewhere, 82 to 83 million shares. Then that would be a test of a gap on lighter volume. Okay, and that would be, uh, what in my opinion, be support. We also had yesterday we had a trend close of 1.17. I like to see 1.2. It's not written in stone, but around 1.2 seems be enough panic in the market to really suggest a low. But last Friday, we had a trend 1.79, pretty close in the same area. So if you notice, when these trends get in panic areas, they, they all they all kind of do it in the same area. Yes. So um, that's what's happening here. So we went down and uh, broke, broke below, a little bit below Friday's low, but we got panic again. And I like to see the, the trend or the tick rather close around at least minus 200, preferably lower than that. And last Friday we had 414, and yesterday we had 208. So not quite as much panic, but still panic. So I'm thinking we're making a low. Um, I think today again. Now, uh, and, and when you're saying that, when you're saying the ticks, uh, you're looking at the closing tip tick, right, Tim? Yeah, just yeah. close. Yeah, just okay. close. When everything gel, interday, um, I've tried to studies in the past and yeah we really, used to have two of them you get the no, first no. one the the you know if the, the within three days 70 percent of the the big one right yeah right okay all right so anyhow so yeah these are all in a close 
And so uh, yesterday's volume picked up a little bit. Uh, when I put my uh, buy signal out yesterday, I didn't know what the volume's going to be. I thought it was going to be lighter. turns out it be a, a, it was a little bit heavy, heavier. And that implies yesterday's low is going to be tested. Well, it is testing. And we also came didn't touch the gap yesterday, but today we did touch the gap, even though this chart doesn't show it because it's inner day. Uh, but we touched the gap, so I'm um, concluding probably today's volume is going to be lighter, 10% lighter than the, the gap volume. So anyhow, so if we can't get through the gap, can't get through the previous lows, you'll try to take out the previous highs or go back up to the gap area. So I'm thinking during expiration week, I don't know if the rally really starts tomorrow or, or Monday, but probably expiration week, we're going to go up and uh, test the upper gap, which is the August 2nd gap. And the same thing will apply if you test that those gaps on lighter volume. I didn't write down the volumes, but you look like close to 100 million shares in that range. So we go back to 454 and volume drops, say, to 90 million shares. That gap's going to be resistance. So I'm thinking that was, this is what's going down right now is an A. We go up to a B, then we go down to a C is what I'm thinking what's happening here. So It's um, quite a sell-off today, man. I mean, you know, we had a spread in the S&P of 60 points from highs to low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it get, it gets. I know I was close enough. I I thought we'd go touch the gap, and and here we are. Um, I might got the closing low uh, the day before. It wasn't really that much room because if we do go to four fifty four and find resistance, it's only about a percent up. And to me, that was not worth the risk. If I got two or more percent, then I'd take the trade. Yep. And if if uh, if you take yesterday's close and and we do get to 454, that's at least 2%, so that's worth my while. So, right. Um, so, anyhow, that's what it looks like on a short-term basis. So I'm, I'm thinking we're making a low, probably some sort of rally during the expiration week. We get up to that gap up above, and we can't get through that, then we'll turn back down again. So, And the more times you test the gap, the more res the less resistance that, or support that gap has. Yes. So we touched it today. If we do rally up and we only touch that top gap one time and finds resistance, we go down again. That gap won't be the gap at um, uh, July 12th won't be res won't be support anymore because if you because it'll be the second time you test that gap and normally the second time you, you pass through. So we'll see how it works. You know, there's a bunch of garbage in here, so it's it's not like a trending market. Um, but so, so anyhow, it, it, it is what it is. So right. No, it, no, it, no it, I get it. I get it. Trust me. I get it. Yeah. So, which is what I'm thinking I'm in. Right. So the, um, um we, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We go to the second chart. Yeah. But, uh, we, or are we talking more about this? No, chart? no. The second chart. Let's do the second chart. Okay. So I have this. Right. right. This is a kind of, this is a bigger view. Uh, yes. what's going on. And to me, it's bearish. Um, the reason why the, the second window up from the bottom is the 21-day uh, average of the trend. The next window higher is the 63-day of the trend. And both those trends got into bearish territories here on this rally. And those red lines show the times when those trend readings got into bearish territories. Most of the time it came at uh, close to highs or right at highs, whatever. Uh, so... In other words, markets, when the trend stays low for a long period of time, it kind of implies exuberance, I guess. Okay. And the market needs needs to knock off that exuberance. So as always, market goes from exuberance to, to panic, back to exuberance, back to panic, and this goes back and forth you know, over, over time. So if the market's going up and there's no exuberance, it's going to keep going. And once you get the kind of exuberance, it's... This is time to be uh, cautious. So I marked the times in the past with uh, those red lines uh, saying, what, you know, most of the time they came right, you know, close to the highs. So I'm thinking this is a worthwhile high that's forming here, even though we may rally next week. Um, we're probably going to rally next week, uh, hit some sort of a high up around that uh, what, 454 SPY range and probably go back down. And I'm hoping on the next decline, you know, we get panic. And like we said in the past, you know, 
for a bottom to form, you got to have panic. If you don't have panic, it's going to go down until you do get panic. Because the only place that bottom forms is on panic. Uh, bottoms don't form just out of nowhere. You know, the bottom form when everybody's kicking and screaming. Yes. So it, it, it's him. When, you know, it seems that the the folks have been panicking very quickly these days, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think this is going to be a, you know, a big decline at all. I, I think it's, it's going to be a pretty big, you know, not a healthy, you know, you're only, I'm only talking maybe 6 7% pullback. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're, we're starting to see panic pretty close off the high, so I don't think this is going to be a big decline <laughs> at all. Yeah, just stay there for a second. We get a quick break. Tim Wood, myself, we're going to be right back, folks. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up 79, NASDAQ's up 29, S&P's up 5. We're coming right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 58, NASDAQ up 16, SPs are flat. We are talking with Tim, and we have a long-term chart here of the S&Ps that we're talking about in the trend. Um, okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Uh, I actually, if we're done with that chart. We can go to chart four, actually. Okay. We change. Uh, I have so it. That's, that's pretty much all I think I need to say about the long-term chart. You get got kind of exuberant up there because the trend got so low yes. over an extended period of time, and it needs to just adjust. So nothing, 
other than that, and I think the adjustment, you know, you're right. You know, we got panic kind of right off the low, according to the or right off the high. We got trend readings kind of high already. And that's a really good sign because if you're getting panic right off of a high, you know that the decline is probably not going to be that severe. So that's a good point you made. But anyhow, uh, moving on to chart four. This is a chart, um, and actually it's the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume. And I circled in in uh, red the times uh, this indicator got below minus 20. And each time it did, it was uh, a bottom. It was a bottom in that the market quit going down, but it didn't go up right away. It went sideways, and sometimes went sideways Back in 2016, it went sideways for like six months. And we've been going sideways now because this happened about June 15th when we hit below minus 20. And pretty much we've been going sideways since about mid-May. So it's been, well, now we're mid-August almost. So it's almost been three months. The market really hasn't gone any, anywhere. And so, but what's important here is the market's gone sideways. This indicator is going, has been going up which is a positive divergence. But the rally really, uh, from my experience, really doesn't begin until um, both those indicators, which the next one above that is the 50-day average up, down volume, advanced decline indicator. Right. But the bottom one, once you get above zero, that's usually when the impulse wave starts. And when I sent you this chart, it was, what, 2.84. And uh, as I'm looking right now, we're on one point. Uh, this is minus 1.88. When I sent you that charge, it has minus two, um, 2.84. So we're awful close to zero. And so once this gets above zero and, and holds above zero, that is the time the impulse wave starts. So That's a pretty cool I'm indicator, thinking. Tim, as the aspect, yeah. because what happens, folks, when we go sideways, sideways many times is building cause for the next move. So it right. frustrates everyone. We know that, Tim, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. And so it would be going sideways, but this in, internals are actually getting stronger because these, you know, yes. if they were weak, they'd be holding, you know, down close to, you know, minus 15 or something like that. They're not. They're, okay. They're, you know, so it's kind of a washout move to the downside. And the market's gone sideways, and you're building a base here. And this kind of chart kind of shows that. So the blue uh, shaded areas. You know, I didn't shade them all, but just the major ones. The blue shaded areas are the times when this indicator is above zero. Okay. And you can see uh, all those shaded areas are when the um, GDX was in a rally mode. And sometimes these rally modes last just a couple of months, and sometimes they lasted, you know, uh, quite a long time. You know, especially the one back in, in what, 2000, uh, yeah, 2019. That rally, you know, lasted over a year or so. Oh, yeah. Don't know how long this one's going to last. Right. But I'm, think, I'm thinking we're going to rally above the previous highs on GDX, which is 36. So I'm thinking um, there's a trend line up there, too. So we'll have to wait and see. But this is by name. By, uh, it's, it's not bearish. It's just bullish. So um, and everybody's kind of, you know, especially if you get lethargic, People, you know, the gold market's dead and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. And that's no, kind of this, the feeling this, right. uh, of what the, the market's doing. So Right. You know, hey, I want to, can I switch gears on you for a second? It's going to be interesting. What's going to, how is the, the, the ratio on the VIX coming out? Because this is so weird today. I mean, you know, we've had a 60-point move, and the VIX is still in the red. <laughs> so it's like, you talk about, that's almost saying there's no fear. It's so weird. Like the VIX is trading fifteen fifty seven. Yeah, that's what you want to see. You know, if when the S the S and P's hit a well, we're actually it just touched or a closing low right now. You want you want to actually when the market's going down and the VIX is not going down, is bullish. When the market's going up and the VIX is going up, that's bearish. So the VIX right now is is kind of saying the same thing. The VIX is. Yeah, we're up. Uh, we're pretty much unchanged from yesterday. I, I, right. Well, so far as the market's, uh, it's not saying a lot. But the VIX is actually lower now than it was several days ago. If you notice that. Yeah. You know, no, I know. That's that's. I mean, and you know, I'm I'm looking at a market that just sold off that many points. That's that's my point of it. I guess it's like okay, well, that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the VIX gets quite a bit of inf- information. So I watch it. I, I do stuff, you know, the trend, I'm so familiar with it because I've been looking at it for quite a long time. Yes. Uh, and the VIX is not new to me. I'm just trying to figure out some new uh, indicators right. with it. And I have right. some your midterm indicators that work really well. And um, and I noticed that if, if the VIX is uh, going with the market, you know, if the VIX is, uh, is going down uh, along with the SPs, that's bullish because the VIX should be going up when the market's going down, right? Yes. So, and if the market's going up and the VIX is going up with it, that's a divergence too. That means the market could uh, turn back down. So, uh, if you notice, again, you know, last, you know, we're about, I don't know, this the last four days, you know, well, five days ago, one, two, three, four, yeah, you know, five days ago, the VIX was over 17, looks like on the close. Now we're 16. And the S&Ps is pretty much setting at its lows. So, right. Uh, so that to me is bullish because the VIX should be higher. I not get lower. it. Okay, cool. Okay. So, yeah. so it's kind of confirming that yeah. we're probably, you know, and we're hitting this gap uh, today. And that gap, again, is 91 million shares. So I like to see volume 10% lighter because when you test the gaps, like testing a previous high on 10% lighter volume, gaps work the same way. If you test the gap on 10% lighter volume, that gap has support. So, so we're going to come in. We'll we started, let's see. We're at, well, we're at 75 million now on the SPY. So we're going to end up okay, with. That, yeah, the July 12th is where that gap formed. July 12th. And that had 91 million shares. I'm looking at the SPY. Yeah, no, that's what I have up. Cool. Okay. Okay. I got it. All right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so you want to come in, you know, Nine million shares less, so it'd be what eighty-two million, give or take. Yeah, you know, if it's even seven percent liars is is pretty good. So we're probably you know, going to get in over that though. With seventy-five already, we get you know twenty minutes left. But the last twenty minutes, they'll throw twenty million in there. We're probably going to come in about ninety million. So that's going right, to. Then that would probably mean today's low could be tested again. Again, okay, okay. So that would. We'll have to wait and see. So. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure, Tim. And, folks, it's real easy to get hold of Tim Moyd. You can get his newsletter. Go over to our, go, well, go to ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to speaking here on Tuesday. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 25, the NASDAQ's up 4, S&P's are down 5.5. And, and folks, as you come over to our website, at TFNN, right into featured content, you're going to see our man, Mr. Teddy Case, that he's going to be doing a candlestick um, pattern um, stock and option strategies uh, coming this Monday, okay? So check it out in the front page. It's going to be 4 to 5 p.m. What this is going to be, he's going to be talking about, he has a book on candlestick charting, folks. Uh, specifically, it's going to be candlestick charting, where you should be getting in, where you should be getting out. So check it out on the front page of TFNN, right under featured content. And the bottom line is that uh, that is that costs only $97, folks, okay? right on the front page of TFNN. We get over to the markets, we take a look at the markets, and the bottom line is that they are going after the close, after the lows, rather. We take a look at them, they just went all negative. So, they're going after it, and that's, that's, that's you know, bottom line is that, that, that this is quite a move, man. <laughs> we haven't seen something like this in a long time, man. That's, you know, when you, and what we also had in here, folks, is that we also had jumps of here. I'll show you these jumps because this is how this is how the market was reacting like three or four months ago. We had a jump from 44.88 to 45.06 in 10 minutes, and the next 10 minutes bar took it back down to 44.65. Then we had the big bounce off the bottom that it went from 44.73 getting up to the 4501. That's trading from like three or four months ago, man. You know, and volatility, folks, is your best friend if you're trading. You know, it'll drive you crazy if you're investing. Well, just if you're investing, just don't look at the market. That's the easiest thing to do. That's the bottom line. Um, but this is, uh, you know, like when I take a look at this, it's like, okay, you know, you... Let me put the SPY up for a second. So, it's the dollar. No, let me put the dollar up because it's the dollar that's throwing a wrench into this thing. And the dollar looks to me like you're going to, tomorrow is going to be a heavy day, man. It looks like to me they're going to blow gold out of the water. Because see, this move on the dollar, well, this is how this works actually. Oh, look at this. This is going to be intriguing. So, see this move here on the dollar? It rejected 101.784. And we're at 102,629. Now, this is intriguing because Teddy's doing the uh, workshop on candlesticks. This actually is a hanging man. Now, it did reject lower price, but it's not a hammer because hammers come at end of downdrafts. This is certainly not a downdraft. That's been going up there. So now the question is going to be, okay, was it just a rejection or are you going to have an ABC up? My take is that we're going to actually have an ABC up. And if that's what we get, you're going to get, we're going to get some real action here, man. And that ABC up is going to bring you not to the first swing point, which is 108, 156. No, I'm sorry, not 108. 102, 224. Not there. It's 
going to bring you up to the next one, which is that 104, 699. That's how that seems thing to be checking out. And then it's like, okay, you're not too far away from the 105, 883. <laughs> but let's just see with how many, let's see. That's 102, 800 to 99. So it's approximately just shy of three, which you get you the about 104. What's that up there? Yeah, we're going. That's what we're going. To, we're going to that 104 up there, man. That's where we're going, and that is going to raise. I think that's going to keep selling pressure on the market. And as I said, you know, as I started the program today, what we have seen, we saw it happen today, we saw it happen yesterday, and I forget whether it's Thursday or Wednesday. Let me look at the S and P's for a second. That, this is the third day that surprises came out. Yeah, here it is right here. So yesterday, oh, it's more than that. One second, let's see. Let me put this back. Ten days. Okay. So, yeah, here it is right here. So let's see. This is Thursday. The surprise to the downside happened today. Surprise to the downside happened yesterday. Yesterday is Wednesday. Tuesday, oh, last Friday. Same deal. So it was yesterday, today, and last Friday. You know, that's, that's when, to, to me, that's when trends have changed. That, you know, when you, when you have surprises to the upside, you're in a bull. When you have surprises to the downside, you're in a bear. That's kind of how it works. And, and, and what I mean by surprise is that they come out of nowhere. I mean, that one yesterday, you know, I, I want to thank Basil for doing the show, but that came out of nowhere, man. That was like, boom. And the one today was the same way. I mean, you take a look at this. I mean, they were buying, 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 and then someone came in the market and just croaked them. I mean, you can see this thing. There was, there was no volume up there, that's for sure. That top tick only had... Uh, 71,000, we came off it with, well, the first bar wasn't bad. The first bar was 49,000, second bar was 58, and then see you later. Then we went up to 84, and yeah. Let's go take a look at the silver market. So the silver contract's laying right at the lows, too. Yeah. This is telling me on a Friday we're going to break this thing, man. you got to be, you know, you got to be prepared for this if you're a bull in the silver or gold market. Because where the, the contract itself is a 22.77, 22.54, 22.34 is the low. The strength is, the top of the strength is 22.39, the bottom of the strength is 21.10. So if I go to the SLV and take a look at that, you're going to see the swing low is 20.66. And the problem is that where the strength actually comes in is way down here. And there's a lot of strength, but that's the bottom of that is 1911. And we put this one here. My, my point is coming in on a Friday, that's where this gets dangerous, meaning even in the broad market, because if that dollar continues to go high, you can see the dollar, the dollar is tick for tick today. That's the bottom line. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness out here, you had, uh, what is this? Let's see. Oh, Trade Desk is down 4.5%. Lucid Automotive is down 4.3%. Uh, you got Broker. Oh, no, Baker Hughes. Baker Hughes is down 2.9%. Uh, Mercado Libre is up 5%. Datadog is up 4.5%. And Zscaler is up 2.4%. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 41. NASDAQ is up 11. S&Ps are down 2. We'll come right back.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. At Dow. Dow Industrial is up 43, NASDAQ up 15, S&P is down 1. And folks, if you live in Florida, right, you know, we've talked about this before, Citizens Insurance, right? You're going to hear a lot about this in the next couple of days because now Citizens Insurance and that's the state nonprofit is the biggest insurance company in the state of Florida. And I suggest that you, if you're getting insurance bills, right, that it, from a regular private insurer, they're insane. They're like, they, yeah, I'll just give you what the difference. The difference is, um, let's say in a, on a $500,000 house, you'd be paying like 10 to 11,000 right versus a citizen's pol policy at 3700 okay now this is what i want you to go through because you're going to hear hear this that policyholders themselves okay could be on the hook for more money if in fact we get a catastrophic hurricane because they're the biggest well you're only on the hook this is how this works you're only on the hook for 40 percent of the premium that you paid and then you could do an, an additional 50 uh, five ten percent. So it'd be like just just put fifty percent in there. Well, I can tell you, I insure plenty of places, right? You can you can put fifty percent into the premium you're already paying, okay? And that's still going to be half of what the insurance cost of all these other insurers. And you know the bottom line because it's the state behind it, you're going to get paid. So you know you're going to see this. It's just coming across the Bloomberg right now. Florida's last resort. Property insurer is now the state's biggest, and inside of that there, I'm sure folks are going to get, when I was just reading this, I says, hold on, I'm on the hook for what? 
But when I just did the math behind this, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's, that's, that's the bottom line. And it has to do, you know, unfortunately, in the state of Florida, there's so much fraud. It's disgusting. And that's, that's what hurts all of us. And it's just continual. Go from car fraud to freaking house fraud. And, you know, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. And it's, it's sad, actually. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. There's going to be action just like today, folks. 9 a.m. Oh, meow! Go get him, folks!